Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King And today I'm going to be giving you part 4 of What if Naruto learned black magic from a powerful spirit Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys Go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What if Naruto Became the boogeyman of the elemental nation and enjoy that guys over in anime king 2 And also over in anime king 3 I posted a brand new episode of what if Naruto Was from all the clans and taken by Obito So go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family and thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, what is it begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last time we left off, Naruto was getting really really pissed off by Kakashi's attitude as they made their way. Upon arriving towards where the demon of the mist was, it was none other than Zabuza as Naruto took him on. He decided to make it be a fair fight by just using water techniques. Considering that he had control over almost every element as he just used nothing but water techniques against Zabuza. But Zabuza was overwhelmed as he was thrust and slammed into a tree. As Naruto stepped towards him but Haku came. As she took out Zabuza before, taking him along with her. Thanking them for helping her capture her target. So with that the group made their way back to Tezuna's house. As Naruto warned Kagashi because he saw what the man was doing. He was trying to copy his techniques while he was fighting but Kagashi had no success in doing so because Naruto didn't have ordinary techniques. So with that they made their way back to the house, as Kakashi finally realized that Zabuza was not dead, as Naruto merely laughed, how stupid was he, he was just realizing that now. As he brought them outside for training, he demanded that Naruto teach Sasuke his techniques. As he brought Naruto out to the field where Sasuke started to learn the tree walking exercise, as Naruto put him in his place, as he left him on the ground as a crumbling mess. Afterwards he met Haku as he was taken back to where Zabuza was. As they spoke to one another, it didn't mean that they had to kill people as Naruto, find some kind of strange comradeship with them. When the time finally came around for them to make their way towards the bridge, as Naruto protected Tezuna's family, as he arrived at the bridge to see Sasuke was littered with needles. As Naruto walked past him before, he spoke to Haku. As Naruto intercepted by creating a massive wall of ice, that stopped Kakashi from hitting Zabuza. He then made his way when Gato showed up as Naruto conjured up a spell. As the attack grew mace, most of the citizens of Wave but they were happy. Because Gato and his old group was just eviscerated like they were never there to begin with. They were erased as Naruto stood there. Kakashi was stunned by the display of power as he couldn't believe what he just saw a minute ago. So with that. As Zabuza and Haku decided to head it out, moving on to their next target, as Haku told Naruto something, as Naruto hugged her because it was a s information that he need. Meanwhile, the group headed back to Kanoha, as Naruto ignored the group the entire way there, as Kakashi was getting on his last nerves. Once they got back and informed the Hokkaiki Naruto that good idea, whatever Kakashi kept hidden behind that mask, he didn't want anyone else to see, so he was going to find out what was underneath that mask. First thing first, he made his way to where Guy lived. Arriving inside, Naruto gained a new phone of respect for the man as he had some stylish clothing. But he seemed to just always wear that green spandex suit. As he arrived in a snow sunshine, shocking Guy's team when they saw him arrive, as he didn't expect the snow sunshine. As Naruto greeted them, as all of them had different opinions seeing him. So yeah guys, the base guys were the top you guys gained. 
switch across the place, check out the other episodes, and yeah, all this to begin this new episode. Remember to go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto became the boogeyman of the world. And also guys, what if Naruto was from all the clans and taken by Obito, so yeah. Let's get straight into this new episode guys. Neji gave Naruto a glare as his inner Neji was screaming in his head. Neji, not many people know this but he took good care of his appearance. And his dark brown hair was difficult to silk down and shiny but this newcomer had even better hair than him. And it seems like he just woke up like that and that angered Neji as he didn't even know who this person was. As Naruto broke the silence and made his way over, he decided to be polite and not his usual self. Hello Gai-san, please forgive me for my sudden interruption, but I was wondering, since hatake san seemed to be busy either, brooding over the memorial stone or training the Uchiha, I was wondering if I might observe how a real team interacts. I arrived in Kanoha on the Genin exams and although I'm a newcomer, I'm quite sure that my team is not exactly satisfactory in teamwork. Guy was surprised. The stories that he heard from Kakashi detailed that Naruto was a wolf in sheepskin and Kakashi was sure that the doll that he had was the Kyube or he himself was the Kyube. Speaking of the doll it was not moving at the moment as Guy wondered if Naruto had abilities in puppeteering. Sure thing Naruto san may I ask you a question first? Of course Guy san what would you like to know? Guy wanted to phrase the question so he did not seem too blunt or biased. But from what he's heard, Naruto always ripped up our people questions and got to the real reason what they want to know. I have heard stories about how you fight. And I was wondering if it's true, if you animate your doll, how are you able to do so? From what Kakashi has said, he seen no chuck or string regarding puppeteering and that makes the rather incredible technique. As Naruto struck as thinking pose, he seemed like he was thinking whether to answer or not. The man hadn't done anything against him. He figured he would give the same answer like what he gave to Haku. I have a rare bloodline that give me extreme elemental control and also allow me to animate objects. Fortunate for me yet unfortunate for Hataki-san, a Sharingan was unable to copy any of my abilities when he decided to inspect them with the Sharingan. When I was engaged in a water battle with a new Nin in our C rank mission, Guy was immediately suspicious of this ability. After all, he wasn't just a taijutsu fanatic, while he loved taijutsu. He found many interesting things when he researched old taijutsu styles, and he had read about a set of warriors that use elemental techniques without even weaving hand signs, but they used something to challenge their energy. Rods or dolls. And it seems like that is what was going on here. But Guy was also angry. How would Kakashi, why would he do something like that? Why would you steal techniques from one of your students that was not honorable? While his three students seemed shocked at the bloodline the boy possessed, he decided to ask another question. Naruto-san, would you agree to have spar with me? So I might see how this bloodline work in battle. I have to agree it piqued my interest and it will be helpful for my students to increase their youthfulness while watching such an interesting fighting style. As Naruto tapped his chain thinking it over, before he took the doll off his head and placed it on the ground. As you wish guys and hand to hand, doll to hand or full combat. How about hand to hand first then doll to hand then full out combat said guy. Most people with bloodlines always focus on their bloodline alone and neglect their other talents. And if your bloodline is how you say it is, I would expect you to be a bit shoddy with your taijutsu. Perhaps I can help you with it said guy. As Naruto was surprised, he understood what the man was saying right away. Perhaps the man had come across some other black mages, fighting style through history. As Naruto slipped into a stance, as Guy recognized it indeed, judging by the widening of his eyes. It was a truly ancient fighting style. The names were lost in the history books. He had been trying to study it for the past few months. Its potential was quite large. It encompassed flexibility division and precise strikes to cause intense pain and cripple your opponents. It required intense training so that it was nearly impossible to copy it. But it was quite good against Sharingan users because they couldn't fight your style with their same style as they would hurt themselves in the attempt. Guy shifted into his cooking stance 
as his jenny moved the trees, as a single leaf fell down between them. As the both of them saw the signal as they moved, the doll sensing that it wasn't quite need yet, hop up into the trees, scaring them a bit, but Neji would not admit that, as it jumped right in Tintin's lap, surprising her as she looked down towards him. Meanwhile, Guy was surprised. It seems that Naruto has trained in this style for a decade or so, as he fluently block and dodge and evade all of his strikes. As Naruto's flexibility match with the body enhancement that Urchimaru had done to himself twisting and turning in certain areas that he should be able to twist and turn into, but he was sure that Naruto had nothing of the sort done to him. He was just able to master this style to an extent where he could move his body at such a degree that made it look impossible, but it was. As Naruto was able to strike him in his knees and his hands, as Guy was not joining for nothing, he was able to slam the pain away as he focused on this spar that was just getting good. They contained their tight juices spar for about 10 minutes. Neither of them took it too far though. As they both separated, as they breathed lightly, Guy had some bruise over him from the strikes that Naruto delivered. As Naruto bruises were a lot larger than Guy's, the doll hopped out of Tintin's lap and leaped into Naruto's arms. As Naruto was smiling, he looked happy to have a purse to fight. As Guy's serious facade crumbled under someone who had revived such an ancient fighting style, Yosh Nurutakan, your youthfulness shines brightly. I have only heard legends of that style and that it was incredibly dangerous to train in. How was it that you were able to use that style to its fullest? As Nurutakan's stoic demeanor lifted a bit, a sad smile tugged on his lips. I was taught by my caretaker and mentor from when I was three to the age of 14. She had insisted that my bloodline is not a fighting beast, so it would be better if I learn evasion hand-to-hand -hand combat first and master that style before moving on to real hand-to-hand -hand combat. As Guy nodded his head, his youthfulness slipping back into place as he was getting excited by this fight. She must be quite the young woman, Rutakan. Yush. Now on to the next part. Doll to hand combat. Send it at me with as much as you have, Nurtakan. Guy could have sworn that he felt a malicious smirk coming from the doll. As Nurta nodded, a violet aura flickered behind Naruto. As he flipped away, dropping the doll in mid air. The doll landed the moment it did, it moved. Joining level speeds it moved at, shocking Guy and the others that were watching. Guy started to dodge as he latched out with attacks. But to his surprise, the nine tails blocked every single counter that he made, and not to mention those sharp plushy teeth. The tails caused crater in the ground, shocking Guy's team as they couldn't believe what they were seeing. As Naruto wanted to give Guy more of a challenge, as he was really excited about this fight, he then remembered what Lulu said. The only limit to black magic is your imagination. However, black magic can never fall into the realm of healing because that is governed by white magic. No black magic spell can possibly heal. But aside from that, the possibilities are endless. When you want to create your own spells, you must think of what you want them to do. And then you must open up your mind to the possibility to meet those ends. Allow your instincts to guide you, but also make sure that you're able to guide your instincts as well. As the answer popped into Naruto's mind, the aura around him darkened as he started to create the spell. Guy noticed this and wondered what Naruto was doing. As the doll then froze in place, Kayubi feeling the spell affecting him, he wondered what Naruto was up to now. The ground was speeding further and further away from his hands. As he realized what was happening, he was growing. As Naruto wanted to give Guy a better challenge, well a better advantage because he couldn't hate him while he was so small. But this was good for him. It felt good to be big again. He was around 4 feet tall now. Each of his tails were at least 6 inches long. The Jennings were quite shocked as Naruto spoke. I felt that the doll, small stature was an unfair advantage for me guys then. So I decided to increase its size. Now you can fight it more effectively. But be warned, it will be a lot more powerful said Naruto. Guy nodded in slight awe at what the teen was able to do. Before he continued the fight, the ground started to crack as the doll hit this time. There was so much more force under its hits. It was a bit stronger than before. More than a bit. But there was a still big disadvantage. The doll wasn't really a human. It do not tire, it do not feel pain. So, well, it can't really be stopped unless you destroyed it. And it didn't have bones to break. That was one of the biggest advantage 
of guy fighting style. About five minutes later, a heavily breathing guy called for a halt as Naruto stopped the plushy toy. As Akei became over to Naruto while he was big, he still fall under the scratching behind his ear as his tails start to swish. As Naruto shrinking back down to a smaller state, as Guy got his second win after about 10 minutes, he was feeling quite exhilarated but a bit scared on how the boy would be in all out combat. But the boy was at least joining in strength. But it seems Kakashi hadn't taught him at all or even tried to. He was quite disappointed in his rival on how he let a prize do like this slip through his grasp. His genins were wide eyed in shock at the genin who had to be just a year younger than them. Yet he showed that he was quite capable and his doll could fight on par with Guy. Well, he still had his weight on, but that was still an impressive boast. And not to mention he said he had extreme control over the elements. As they were excited to see how this would turn out, Naruto decided that guy had really earned his respect. As he spoke up in a soft, amused tone, guy san if we continue, I'm afraid we won't be able to prevent this training era from being destroyed. Due to my elemental manipulation I specialized, in wide-scale demolition, if Hatagi-san told you anything about our c right mission, surely he told you what happened when I was faced with opponents. Guy blinked as his eyes widened in recollection. Kakashi had stated that his blonde student was a demon when he came to the battlefield, stating that his abilities were nothing less than Kage-level destruction. He had said that the blonde had wiped out a full army of mercenaries as well as their boss with only one single technique. You have a point, Naruto san said Guy. Would it be possible for you to show me some of your techniques though? I haven't been able to see anyone accomplish much with pure elemental manipulation alone ever. The only Jonin in Kanoha that can do a bit much with elemental is Asuma, a trench knife wielding Jonin who enhances trench knife with wind manipulation. As Naruto thought about it, smaller explosions, bigger destruction, or wide scale destruction. As Guy thought about it for a moment, the best you have, but to a point, as I don't wish for this training ground to be destroyed, as Naruto nodded as he set the toy in the ground. Dark purple power flicker around him as he raised a single hand in the air. The dull tail spring to life as it flicked from side to side in a rather hypnotic manner. What did you said Naruto. A huge globe of water exploded in existence above the training ground, at least 50 feet in diameter. It hovered for a bit before twisting into a massive water dragon as it knocked over trees with a simple flick of its tail. Brizai said Naruto. As the thing exploded into a shower of rain before freezing into hundreds of thousands water needles as they slipped into the ground without even a sound, a testament to how sharp they were, they slipped through without any resistance. They all slipped back out leaving tiny imprints where they were as they slammed into another forming a large chrism of ice that hovered in the air before it slammed into the ground. As all the grass turned into ice before the massive chrism of ice shattered, it was like glass. As Naruto smiled at the sight remembering Haku's hint, as Naruto could feel two more individuals in the trees, but he felt no ill intent from them. As he continued, the doll flicking its tails, Thundauja said Naruto as he brought his hand down in the bright clear sky 15 thunderbolts connected at least 30 feet above their head as it was deafening. Before he brought them down, he toned down the electricity but the ground didn't survive that well although the people would not be eviscerated by the shock. Boom! As a massive gaping hole was ripped in the earth as he turned towards the next set of trees before he thrust his hand out. Aurora he said. As trees, 50 of them were sliced. The gale of wind just seemed to erupt out of nowhere, shredding trees and everything. As he aimed towards a place that was not already beaten down. Faraja, he said, about 100 feet in the air, hot white flames exploded outwards before imploding on itself as it was massive. A heat wave washed over Kanoha. He then raised both hands up the doll, mimicking every movement as he slammed them down. Urquija, he said. The earth groaned and cracked before thousands of earth spears erupted from the earth. It only stayed for a moment though before it disappeared as the earth returned back to where 
it was before the sparring. All the craters and the dents fill as the earth shifted back into place, replenishing what Naruto damage. The doll hopped back into Naruto's arms as he turned towards Guy. As Naruto did not even look winded, he knew that there were two other people watching him, besides Guy's team, but he did not really care about them, because he sensed no ill contempt coming from them. Is that all you need to see? I can do a few more things, but I'd rather not. Not even my earth manipulation will be able to restore this training field. If I use the technique I use at the end of my C rank, it's hard enough to contain that technique, and the poor trees have suffered enough today, don't you think? As Guy nodded a bit, his three Jennies were beyond shock. Guy was relieved that he didn't fight the boy in all out combat, because the abilities that were shown were quite destructive. He wasn't joking when he said that he specialized in wild scale demolition. The two bystanders still unnoticed everyone but Naruto nodded to each other before they disappeared. Oh yes, said Naruto. I also want to know where you bought your spandex suit, because I believe that Hatekei-san can do with the youthfulness that they provide. I also wish to, because he seemed to have a grudge against me, deprive him of that mask, and bear witness of the world that is known as Kakashi Hatekei's face. If nothing else, it shall serve as blackmail material. If he tried to set me up with a potential, fatal enemy again, Guy was still rather shocked at how unyouthful his rival was being just because of a simple grudge. He was trying to get his own student killed. He could not detect a lie from Naruto and that scary guy. It meant his rival was truly blind by uncalled hatred for this boy and was just using his status as a boy sensei to get him killed. As guy was very angry, really really angry, as the rival that they had between each other, guy felt like he wanted to end it because this was not the rival that he used to know. Trying to get your own student kill. That is unforgivable. Someone that you're supposed to train and prepare for the upcoming world. And yet you were trying to get him killed. It was unforgivable. Guy told him where the store was that cell. The green bodysuit also turned to stop by his apartment. So that they could discuss Taijutsu styles. And especially Naruto's. Because he was incredibly interested in it. Naruto lips quirk up into a smile as he nodded towards the Taijutsu master. Despite the youthfulness and all that, Naruto didn't really mind him that much. With the location of the spandex, Naruto sat down. As he listened to the lesser plan. As he really wanted to see this teamwork that Kakashi was always talking about. Because Team 7 clearly did not have it. Neji glanced over towards him with his Byakun as he saw. No coils. He didn't understand. As Naruto did not possess any chakra coils, and not to mention, the doll had a strange red energy inside of it. As Naruto, watch as they train and practice, as he did some training of himself, a giant golem he created, as it was Neji, Tintin thought that it was cute. As Naruto decided not to say anything about that, calling her a fangirl as she squealed a bit seeing the massive statue of Neji, as he knew that she had pointy objects all over her, as she was just waiting for the opportunity to use them, Lee thought it was youthful, as Naruto created one of each, Neji was cold. As he was an art golem, he was unforgiving on moving, in his views. Tintin was precise, striking, deadly accuracy. She was a bit bumble and, well, fine on the back of field, humble. So he made her a lightning golem. Lee was all over the place, moving incredibly fast. As near to create him as a wind golem, Guy was perhaps bipolar a bit. Despite him being all youthful and all that, when he was faced with something interesting or something that threatened his students, he became a protective spear. As Naruto saw the way he moved in training, the way he taught them, teaching them, protecting them, like water, consuming them, and creating an opening for all angles for him to protect them. So he made him a water golem. The Lee and Neji golem were fighting in their same Taijutsu styles, while the guy golem was telling Tenten to throw kunai's at them for them to dodge. Guy came over to inspect the goal in battlefield, and everything was so accurate. As it allowed Team Guy to see how they perform without having a look on themselves, as they could watch it because their golems were doing the exact same thing that they were doing. As each of them picked up something on what they could do to improve themselves, Tintin was curious how Mini Tintin got her weapons. The wonders of elemental manipulation know no bounds, said Naruto. Time skip. Kakashi's house. Kakashi was taking a light nap as he had 
done a lot today. First, Obito Uchiha, who had died saving him and giving him a Sharingan. As Kakashi always blamed himself for that, if he had gone and rescued Rain earlier, perhaps the Stone Ninjas wouldn't have caught them unaware with that rock slide technique. Secondly, Rain Inazaka, she was captured well. That was a rather painful memory he would try not to think about that much. Finally, his sensei, Minotu Namikaze, the fourth Akagi had given his life, the seal of Kayube, about 15 years ago. And Kakashi blamed the Jinjoki for sensei's death. The fox is the most powerful of the Bejus. Surely, the container had to be corrupted by its influence. But of course, the idea of the seal being foolproof. Because Minato was a genius when it comes towards the arts of sealing, never crossed his mind, so he blamed the Jinjoki. And that new blonde student of his had the nerve to add the Kayubi doll around him and even use it in a fight. As Kakashi did not know that was the real Naruto, after all, he didn't have the whisker marks or those blue eyes that he was known for, so he didn't know that his blonde student was Naruto. And the weird thing was, because Naruto arrived here late, he didn't really focus that much on Naruto's name. Well, he was just that lazy. He made a promise to Obito, so he wanted to ensure that Sasuke live on through that promise by neglecting his other two students. Eventually though he will find out. Well we can hope. He felt an odd draft as it moved across his face snapping from his thoughts as he slowly quirked his eye open. That's odd. I always have my mask on. So the only way I can feel a draft like that is if he bolted up in his bed his eyes widened in the darkness of his bedroom. He lift up the headband to have the Sharingan pierce through the darkness of his bedroom. But then he heard click 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 as something was clicking rather fast and a white light was flashing all over the place. As Kakashi got up rather quickly but by the time he flipped on lights there was no one around. Kakashi cursed as he vowed to find out who. Took those pictures to find out what he looked like as he covered his face. And he would destroy the camera, destroy the copies. The first thought that came to his mind was his blonde student. Nobody thought about it. His blonde student and the Jinjulki was the same age. And blonde here. Maybe he changed his eyes and removed the whisker mark somehow. Because that was a fox on his head. As it all snapped into place for Kagashi. Back with Naruto. As he appeared in the Hokage's office in a swirl of snowflakes. Interrupting the Jonin meeting that was taking place. But he didn't really care right now. He had pictures of Kakashi's face. And nothing could ruin his good mood. Not even the unnatural hate coming from most of the Jonins in the room. As he strode towards the Hokage. As he created that transparent scream of mana. I have completed my self imposed triple S class mission. As that shock the ninjas in the room. I have successfully. Gain physical and mental proof of what the hell Kakashi Hataki looks like under that mask. Allow me to show you from my memory what he looks like while I wait for the picture to print. The screen flicker a bit as it show Kakashi Hataki, his eyes wide and white as he looks startled but his mask was not there. The scar across his left eye was there but no one really cared about that at the moment. The man's face was absolutely perfect. Unmarked skin, pale from lack of sunlight where the mask usually covered, and a tan line marking where the mask usually was. Many of the Jonin Kun witches couldn't help but stare as their cheeks became a bit red. They didn't really care that the demon was the one to complete the mission as they have waited for so long for this. But there were two people that were glancing towards Naruto and that was Kurna Yuai and Uncle Mirashi. They were looking towards him with awe that he complete this mission and they also had a look of regret. But Naruto did not seem to care one bit. The image then disappeared back into his mind as Naruto bow. I am sorry for interrupting your meeting Hokage-sama but I felt because it was such an important moment you could forgive this intrusion said Naruto. As he disappeared into thin air, time skip later that night Naruto snuck into Kakashi's house using a technique to keep him hidden from sight and his smell was also dispersed. He could not be tracked at all and the way he moved there was no sound. With three of the five senses taken out, he doubted that Kakashi would lick him. And the only one that was left was touch, so that was pretty easy to avoid. He moved through the area, as he made no trail as he moved. As he was doing something rather risky and dangerous, but it had to be done. As he made sure that Kakashi was sleeping, as he moved towards the closet. 
as he started to make the alteration to the man's clothing. After that was done, he moved towards his most risky task. The doll on his head was almost hyperventilating from the anticipation as Nurt realized he would have to use a sort of genjutsu instead of a physical transformation. Using his mana, a flicker of light went off before the spell was cast. He then left as he made sure not to leave any trail behind. The next morning, 9 a.m., a deafening scream of no could be heard all through Knoha. It would have woken people, but it was 9 a.m. Kakashi was always late for everything. And he was late for the sunrise, perhaps. He will also be late for his own funeral. As Naruto was currently waiting with Sakura and Sasuke at Train Ground 7. As he was playing with his golems. As he snickered to himself. As this spandex clothing would latch onto his skin. And any clothing that he might push over it, it would imitate said clothing and turn it into a spandex as well. And he was sure that Kakashi wouldn't want to go outside naked as he had removed every sense of article from the room. The moment he put one of them on, it was slashed onto his skin and its spell would last for 24 hours as Naruto kept himself calm. As Kakashi arrived, face mask as usual, but that was the only thing that was normal about him. He was wearing a green spandex bodysuit. Kakashi here was also done in a bowl cut like my guy as Naruto had made sure to cut it down as well. And it was now like a bowl cut exactly like guy except it was silver. As Kakashi was glaring at everything around him, the ground, the trees, the sun, everything. As Naruto had a mini Konoha in front of him, as a Hyubi made from ice was currently destroying it. As Kakashi strode right up Naruto, with the knowledge that Naruto was now the Hyubi Jinjoki, well that could make him blame more things on him. You. You did this to me, he said. As Nurt looked at the man as he pulled an innocent face, which was rather hard to do because of how much you want to laugh. How are you so positive, Hotake, he said. Do you have any proof? Kakashi started to sputter a bit because he really didn't know who did it. But he could still blame the Jinjulke. I know you did it, you demon. You must have done it. You had to be jealous that Sasuke was getting better in his training than you were. And you lashed out at me for that. Hmm. It seems he finally figured it out, Naruto thought to himself. Who cares, he ate me before. I guess he will just hate me a bit more now. As Naruto got to his feet, giving Kakashi a dead stare. But Kakashi would not let that intimidate him. Hatake-san, I advise you to stop going around causing or making false accusations. And I'm actually quite a bit stronger than you. So given that I can defeat you in combat, I don't really give a shit what you teach Sasuke. I am quite annoyed that he would stoop so low. To think I would lash out at you. However, your face mask is quite null and void at this point. It seems someone has ransacked your home and got a few pictures of what you look like under that mask. They seem to have spread all over the village, I believe. Oh, I can hear your fan club coming right now, said Naruto. The groans start to tremble. As Kakashi turned as he heard, Kakashi kun. As the man's eyes went wide, Kakashi tossed three forms at Sasuke, telling him that he nominated the team. He just wanted to nominate Sasuke but he had to because it was a team exam and that they would start in a month. He then took off. As Naruto took one of the papers from Sasuke, who was still shocked at the whole event, he made his way towards training ground, 27. As Naruto met up with team guys he showed them, an image of what Kakashi looked like now, by going through his memories. As Guy and Lee realized that Kakashi was becoming more youthful than he was, Tintin burst out laughing as Neji turned his head. It has always looked ridiculous, but now on Kakashi, it looked horrendous. As Naruto bid a farewell to the team as he disappeared in a gust of cool air, before he made his way as he felt someone watching him intensely, as he reappeared a few feet away from Joni that was spying on him. And why exactly are you spying on me, Joni san said Naruto. Yamato, being the one that was spying, focus, as he blinked rapidly and looked towards the kid, but he decided to be as truthful as possible. I have seen your ability to create a fusion element of ice during the Jonin meeting yesterday and I was wondering if you could create any other. As Naruto was surprised by that but he did not sense any malice from the man. But he warned him not to spy on him next time. If he was quite fond of living. I have not been able to recreate the others to my satisfaction. So I acquire people with the respective bloodline fusions to give me advice on the two. That would be needed to combine to make the special element. I met a Hayaton user on my C rank mission and she gave me the much needed advice. 
Until I find someone with a bloodline ailment, I guess I can't go that far, said Naruto. As Yamato nodded, Well, you see, I am Yamato, the sole user of Mokidon in Kanoka. Should you prove yourself worthy, I will give you information on how the wood element work. For now, I notice that your ice manipulation still needs some training, so I will wait until you bring it up to par with your other elements before testing you. As Yamato vanished in Shin, as Naruto smirked the challenge before, his entire body froze over as it bursts. As he was gone, another fancy way of using a sunshine, as ice sprinkle around the area. It seems he will have to train a bit more before the exam starts. Time skip, Naruto woke up at exactly 7, 53 am, as he got up rather quickly. As a fox flew off his head but he caught him, before he could hit in the wall. As Kakashi had gave them 3 days after his incident with his newly formed fan club, he had stated that he needed to lay low for a while, but he had invited Sasuke to come by his house for training when he thought that Naruto wasn't listening. I do have to give him some grudge and respect. He's able to lie right in front of my face while he's talking about teamwork, said Naruto. Although, if he started to accidentally throw Kuna in my way, I'm gonna have to kill him. As he got ready before he set out of the house. Training Ground 21 As Naruto had heard that Kuna UI, Gento the master of Konoha, met with her team at Training Ground 21 at 8 a.m. in the morning. As he decided to go and meet his fellow Leaf Shinobis, his comrades, as Naruto told the Kyuubi doll his plan, the doll had laughed and asked him if he was crazy when he think of this. Well, if they attack me, I can legally defend myself, said Naruto, and use lethal force if necessary. Win-win situation, wouldn't you say? As the doll thought it over, well, he was right about that. As Naruto walked into the training ground. As he scared all three of the genies but the Jonin was rather calm about it. As Naruto stood there. Hello Kurnai san he said. My teacher is indisposed for the next three days due to a fast creation of his fan club. But that does not stop him from training in the great Uchiha Sama. I was wondering if I can view how your team work since mine is quite abysmal. When it comes to working together all four of them blink in surprise. The kids expect him to attack first and the Jonin didn't think that he would be that polite. Kiba being the absolute tactical genius he was, decided to reply first before thinking it over. Yeah right demon, you just want to steal all of our secrets and kill us in our sleep. As Naruto turned his gaze towards Kiba, Kiba froze as he felt the killer intent slam into him full force. I am speaking with your teacher, Inuzaka-san, if I wanted to steal all of your secrets, I would need my teacher Sharinga, now would I? Now be quiet before I silence you, said Naruto. Kurunai was about to say something but Kiba beat her to it. The Sharingan is one of the best bloodline in Kanoha. How dare you mock it, you demon. Akamaru, attack! The wolf-sized doll companion hesitated for a second before. He moved forward to attack Naruto. A strange energy surround Naruto. Hinata and Shino didn't understand because it did not feel like chakra at all. It felt like something completely different. Quick, said Naruto. The groan under Akamara became wet as Akamara sunk into the earth before it returned back to solid, trapping the dog at his neck as he started to whimper. What did you do to him, you monster? Kiba shouted. Kurunai-san, perhaps I should leave. If your student continues to attack me, I will be forced to use force to halt him in his movements. It would probably be best. Kiba is quite brash. And I don't seem to have full control over my students. It is good to see you, Naruto san she said. As Naruto glanced towards the dog, it was lifted out of the ground, as it had dirt over its fur. As he started to walk off, Kiba smirked as he jumped in the air and moved. Get Sugat! he shouted. As Kiba was about to slam into Naruto as he was a second away from hitting Naruto from behind, until Naruto turned and backhanded him away. Kiba crashed on the ground rather hard. Creating a massive imprint. Bayou, said Naruto. A thick green of mass just popped up above Kiba before it surrounded him as it was sticky as it caught him, trapping him from head to toe. Kiba held his breath, but the thing slipped under his skin as it covered every single part of him. He felt a burning sensation, unlike sunburn before the mass of green just disappeared like that, like he was never there to begin with. He tried to move but the intense pain that he'd never felt before wrecked his entire being. 
he cried out in pain as he tried again, but the pain multiplied on a completely different level as he screamed out in pain, as he could not move. As Karina rushed over to check up on him as she looked up, what did you do she asked. As Naruto simply shrugged, I used the jello mask to act as a cocktail of poison to his system. He currently has all of his muscles paralyzed except for the vital ones. Every single movement or touch upon his person will cause him unnatural pain that he's never felt before. The more, the worse it gets. It also has no antidote as of yet. I could remove the poison if I wanted to, but I told you, if he attacked me, I would have to do something about it. I never said I would kill him, said Naruto. And this is a much more worse result. Be happy I did not petrify him because I don't believe any of you would be careful enough not to drop this statue and destroy him. As Nurt disappears as frozen, pedals flicker around before they broke and spring all over the ear, creating a rather beautiful view. Time skip. Hokage's office. Sir Tobu was not having a good day. He came in to find he had a lot of paperwork. And while he was working on said paperwork, he got a paper cut. He almost used a fire technique to just burn the entire office. But he had to remember he was a Hokage. And he had to keep a stable mind. As he felt the sign of a sunshine as he covered his papers. As Naruto appeared in a gust of frozen wind. Hokage-san said Naruto. If the Inuzaka head want me to be executed for attacking her son, kindly remind her that he used his Getsuka technique on me. I had my back turned. He will be fine in about a week. But I suppose you could have medical ninjas extract the poison. But it will be quite a challenge. Well, it can be a training for them, said Naruto. Sir will be sighed before he pulled out his pipe. Naruto-kun, what exactly did you poison him with, he asks. Just a cocktail of my own special poison, he can't move, and if he try to, or if anyone touches him, it causes him intense pain, very intense pain. He is lucky I let him live after he attacked my back like that, but I think if I kill a clan head here, the council will try to do something to me. Unfortunately though, I need to train, so I don't have time to screw on with them. Harrison sighs he puffed on his pipe. Nurtakan, why were you around team 8 anyway? You know, I have this crazy idea. I should get to know my comrades better, so I went to Team 8, training ground. I asked Karina and if I can see how a real team reacts, since Hatake san is quite hypocritical. But then the dog boy started to talk, and then he went out of his way to attack me. After, I trapped his dog when he sent it to attack me. So then I poisoned him, said Naruto. What do you mean Kakashi is hypocritical? Asked Harrison. He constantly rambled about teamwork, tried to get us to do teamwork. When all he does is train Sasuke, he always claims nonsense about those who break the rules are trash, and those who abandon their teammates are worse than trash. Yet he ignore both me and Haruno, so that he can train Sasuke. So what exactly does that make him? I heard straight from his mouth him telling Sasuke to come by his place, so that he can train him. After all, it seems like he never wanted to sign us up for the tuning exams either. He just wanted to sign Sasuke up, but it's a teamwork thing, said Naruto. As Harrison was surprised by that, he pulled out his crystal ball as he focused on Kakashi Chakra's signature as he saw him in the backyard of his house and he was teaching Sasuke a technique. Hatake Sen said that we have 3 days off and he pulled the Uchiha aside to give him private training. I bet his sensei will be rolling over in his grave right now if he wasn't already doing it before, said Naruto. The fourth Kage's team was always taught that teamwork was everything. How could he have fallen so far? Perhaps it's the rivalry or the prestige that comes with teaching the wonderful Uchiha-sama. I'm going to go visit Team 10 because I'm sure that your son won't be biased against me. The only decent team I've met so far is Team Guy. Good day Hokage-sama said Naruto as he disappeared in a shower of ice needles. Meanwhile, Team 10 training ground. As Naruto appeared in a tree, as he overlooked Team 10 training. As the tree froze over by his sunshin before melting, as he wondered how he should approach the team, as he was so lost in his thoughts he did not notice a shadow creeping upside tree towards him. He blinked a bit as he remembered that, oh yes, the Nara is used shadow. As he wondered when the Nara come out of hiding, it took about 5 seconds as Shikamaru emerged from the foliage. He too had been told the stories of demon child, but he wasn't a genius for nothing. 
as he held his judgment until he decided to know. Naruto bit more himself. Why are you here? He asked. As Shikamaru knew that he could not escape his technique. But that was a lie, seeing that Naruto burst into smoke. Not a clone, but he just whips away like he was literal smoke as he appeared beside Shikamaru. I came here to speak with her teacher about something, but I do have to congratulate you on capturing me with that technique. Not many people are able to catch me off guard. Before Shikamaru could ask how he escaped the technique, there was a scream. As they screamed out Shikamaru's name. How do you stand that every day? I think she is possibly worse than Haruna-san said Naruto. Shikamaru pulled some earplugs out of his ears. As Naruto wanted to laugh, I read lips and block out sounds he said. After he replaced the earplugs, he led Naruto where his team was training. The moment they came out of the village, he had to deal with a shriek. Of what is he doing here? I wanted to speak with Asuma-san, Yamnaka-san, said Naruto. Inu and Chojo were quite suspicious, both of them being quite biased against the goal in here, Jenin. As Shikamaru had his own thoughts though and his own opinions, Asuma was rather surprised but he had no ill will against the Black Mage. His father had told him while brutal and sadistic, Naruto was quite peaceful, well until angered. Ina was fuming at the demon brat that wanted to speak with her sensei, as she started to shout until an ice needle stabbed her right in the neck. It wasn't the pressure point to put her in a dead like state, but to prevent her from speaking. Her voice is causing more pain to me than most physical wounds, and I feel like it's an attack on my person. She will be silent for about 10 minutes after the needle is removed. There will be no harm besides lack of sound, said Naruto. I apologize, Asuma-san. My real intention was coming here to speak to you, not silence your banshee student. Asuma nodded to the team before he asked the question. So, what do you want to speak to me about, he asked. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember to share all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys... Go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto was from all the clans and taken by Obito over Anime King 3 and enjoy that guys. And over Anime King 2 I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto was the boogeyman of the elemental nation so go ahead check out that and enjoy guys. And remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new and yeah I'm over now see you guys soon. Peace guys!